Hello, everyone. My name is Laura Apisical, and I am the executive director for the Dorrance Life Admission and Student of the Dorrance Life Office of Admission and Student Success. And I'd like to welcome you to our Ask Dorrance Life Admission webinar. And similarly, my name is Mark Kavit, and I am the director of admission here at the Dorrance Life Office of Admission and Student Success. And also want to extend my welcome. With the November 1st early action application deadline coming up for first year or freshman applicants, the Dornsife Admission and Student Success staff members are here today to answer your questions about USC Dornsife, our majors and hands-on learning opportunities, and the application process. Because this program will be based on your questions, please feel free to start submitting questions via the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Please do not submit questions via the chat. We will do our best to answer as many questions as we can during today's program. We also have a number of other staff members here with us today, and they will be responding to your questions via the Q&A box. So please keep an eye out there for answers as well. We know that a lot of you have likely or possibly attended one of either our on-campus programs or one of our other webinars that we've been hosting throughout the month of October. But for those of you who have not had a chance to spend some time with us to learn about USC Dornsife, we want to take a very brief moment just to give you a little bit of information on what USC Dornsife is, how we fit within the larger context of the university, and then we will make sure to address some information about the application deadlines. And then, of course, we'll get to all of your questions as well. So we are the Liberal Arts College here at USC. We are the College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences. We oversee majors in the natural sciences, the social sciences, and the humanities. That gives us about 90 majors and 90 minors across the university. Uh, equates to about 36% or so of the undergraduate population. Uh, while that is the largest school here on campus, I think we also take a lot of pride in uh, keeping the liberal arts focus at the forefront. So we do try to keep our class sizes manageable um, and allow you to really get to know your faculty in the classrooms too. So that's an average class size of about 17 students, a student to faculty ratio at Dorrance have about eight to one. So while we do, again, oversee about 90 majors, there is a lot more that goes into the USC Dornsife experience outside of the classroom. Uh, we have about 66 research centers and institutes here on campus where students at the undergraduate level are participating in academic research, whether that be with faculty or other students here at USC. We also oversee about 55 study abroad programs over 30 different countries. For those of you that maybe wanna spend some time uh, either domestically off campus or go international to not only take classes, but experience some of the world that's out there. Um, but we also have students who are participating a little bit closer to home through some of our service learning organizations like the Joint Educational Project, the Prison Education Project, or other community service learning organizations and initiatives um, that happen right here in Los Angeles as well in other parts of the country. Um, and then of course, many of our students are also participating in internships and finding ways to prepare for their career after they discover what it is that makes them so excited about the liberal arts and about their major. So what I think you will find and hopefully that we will be able to answer through all of our questions here today is not only um, is this a place where you can find the major that you're looking for and study, um, but also enhance your undergraduate experience through some of these other experiences as well. But with that, I'm going to turn it over to Laura to just talk a little bit about the common application, and then we will get into your questions. Thanks so much, Mark. I also want to point out that USC Dornsife has a short answer writing supplement that will automatically appear on the USC writing supplement section of the common application if you select a first choice major within Dornsife. This supplement will only be included for first year freshman applicants and not for transfer student applicants if we have any in the audience today. We've also re we've already received a number of questions about this, so I do want to address a few things. We've provided just one short answer prompt in this section, which is many of us have at least one issue or passion that we care deeply about, a topic on which we would love to share our opinions and insights in hopes of sparking intense interest and continued conversation. If you had 10 minutes and the attention of a million people, what would your talk be about? Your response is limited to 250 words or less, so the response is not meant to be lengthy at all. We just want to hear more about you and your motivations and passions, so please don't worry about trying to tell us what you think we want to hear. We promise that there is no best or right answer. My biggest piece of advice would be that you use this section to write on a topic that you haven't covered in depth anywhere else in your application. The admission officers who read this section of your application will be able to view and read the rest of your USC application, including your common application personal essay, 
any information submitted in the additional information section of the common application and the writing questions specific to USC. So please use this additional question as an opportunity to share a different facet of you and what you care about. And while we have been doing this for a couple of years now, we do want to also make sure to just discuss how USC's early action process works for first year or freshman applicants. I did also see that there was a question in the chat um, if this is an appropriate place to ask questions about the transfer process and being a transfer applicant. Uh, it certainly is if you have found yourself here. Obviously, we're really gearing toward that November 1st deadline, but if you have questions, you're more than welcome to ask those as well. But pertaining to our first year students, students applying to Dornsythe who end up selecting early action as their preferred admission plan and submit their applications by November 1st will automatically be considered for merit scholarship and early admission to USC. Students applying ver via early action will be notified in probably mid to late January as to whether they have been either admitted early to USC or if they're being deferred to our regular decision process. And I just wanna clarify that this is a non-binding and non-restrictive admission. I know there are some other universities that have uh, binding or restrictive admission processes. Uh, and all that means is that students who are admitted early don't have to commit to USC early as well. It's just an allows you to receive a possible admission decision earlier um, and obviously be considered for merit scholarship as well. Some students who are admitted early to USC via the early action will also receive some of that uh, subsequent information that they're being considered for merit scholarship as well. Um, for those who are interested only in USC's regular decision process, our regular decision application deadline for first-year applicants is going to be on January 15th, 2025. And if you are a transfer student, you have just one application deadline, and that's going to be February 15th, 2025. So please keep that in mind if you are not applying to a Dornsife major and instead are applying to a USC major that requires maybe a portfolio or an audition, that is a separate process and those application deadlines do differ. So make sure to check that out before we get going. So I think that is all the information we wanted to give. Like Laura mentioned, this is going to be an opportunity for us to really gear the program toward a lot of the questions that you all have. So we're now going to start going through the uh, audience Q&A through the Q&A box. I uh, also want to, once again, as Laura mentioned, direct your attention that in the Q&A box, there is a section where answered questions are being answered by some of our staff in the background. Uh, so while you may not hear your question aloud, you may see that your question has been answered in the Q&A box. So just make sure to keep an, an eye on both of those areas as we continue to go. So uh, Laura, do okay. you want to jump into the first question or would you like me to take the first one? Yeah, I'll go ahead and start. I see a question, a few questions here in the Q&A about the content of that Dornsife supplemental um, essay that we talked about. And so some students are wondering whether that essay has to be geared or should be geared toward their major of interest or if it's okay okay to write about a topic that perhaps may be politically divisive or, you know, controversial in some way. And the answer to the second question is definitely yes, you please feel free to write about whatever it is that you feel passionate about in that Dornsife supplement. Um, again, that supplement is not there for us to criticize your uh, beliefs or your um, your thought processes. Really, we just want to take a look at, again, what, what moves you, what drives you, you know, what are you truly passionate about? Um, and again, you know, if you um, want to talk about more about um, your major and what you want to study or what you hope to achieve in your life as part of that, that's completely fine. But again, if you'd like to use that section, for us to learn something completely different about you, a different facet of what drives you, that's great as well. And so again, please feel free um, we, to, to use that as you'd like. We aren't looking for necessarily a particular topic. It can be something off the wall. It can be something silly. It can be anything again that, um, that again, you would want to share with a million people if given the opportunity. Continuing on the lines of essays and written supplements and such in the common application, other question we've been getting is, what do we as admission professionals or admission uh, folks who work at USC, what would we like to see the most in the common app essay? And I don't think we have an answer to that because there is not one thing that we are looking for in our common app, app essays in the Dornsife supplement. So this is, again, really your opportunity, as Laura said, to allow your personality and your authenticity to shine through. So we almost prefer that every essay is different because it allows us to get to know you as the applicant on a more personal level. Um, I would say, you know, just as Laura mentioned with the Dornsife supplement, obviously for that essay, you wanna talk about something that's a little different than what you mentioned in the rest of your application. The Common App essays can also be a great way to express why you wanna to come to USC, what types of academic programs you wanna pursue, what extracurriculars are interesting to you. 
Um, and of course, the essay prompts can differ from purpose, person to person because you do have an opportunity to select the type of question that you answer. So inherently, there are going to be some different answers, but there is not one specific thing we are looking for. We do not have a rubric where we say they have to mention this, 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 and that. And once they do that, they're automatically in. It doesn't work that way. Um, so again, I, I would also just say in terms of any part of the application, don't overthink each part. Each part is its own thing. It's all part of the same process. So we're going to look at everything as equally as we do the other pieces. And um, related to that as well, just kind of riffing off of that, um, I do see a few questions about the quick takes section of the common application mm -hmm. and what the content should be like. Again, similar to the Dornsife supplement, there aren't, we aren't trying to psychoanalyze you. There aren't particular um, ways that you should uh, answer those quick takes. Again, this is just another way for us to humanize, I'll be honest, the application reading process for us to be able to get to know you better as a person, separate from all of the more perhaps technical aspects of your application. So again, please feel free to show some personality there to, um, to, to give us a little bit more insight into you and who you are. Um, I know that for some students, they're wondering, you know, whether those answers should be a full sentence or just a few words and that is up to you and so if you feel that um by by naming a particular um the the, the show that you would want to binge watch next that we don't we wouldn't have a good understanding of why you named that show you can feel free to use a phrase or a sentence there we're not looking for a full essay they're quick takes they're meant to be quick um but again if you need a little bit more explanation feel free to write a full sentence there um if you feel like hey you said all you wanted to say in just a few words that's fine too so again um there isn't a particular formula there. It is really just for us to get to know you better um, on the admission reading side. We promise that if there's a quick take that we disagree with, whether it's a favorite snack or a favorite TV show, we won't hold it against you. Don't worry. Looking at some of the other questions, uh, one question, I guess I'll stay with the application piece because we've been kind of covering that. Uh, the question was related to how, and I'm going to kind of reframe it a little bit, is how applications are reviewed here at USC because there is an understanding from a lot of students that there is a central office of admission or a main office of admission uh, that houses all of our territory managers, our admission counselors, who are the ones that go to the different high schools and make those visits, um, as well as really serve as point people for you all as part of the application process. And then of course, there's us in the office of admission here at Dornsife, as well as the other departments that exist here at USC. So I think the question is really just about how those interact and how who to, who to ask the right questions to, I think, is probably the best way to go about it. So what I would say is for the review process, I think it's you know genuinely a partnership. Your, your application review would obviously start with the territory manager. That's the individual that's best known for your high school or your college if you're a transfer student. The ones who's are, who are really familiar with the classes that you're taking, really familiar with the extracurriculars you're involved in and the communities that you serve. Um, and then, of course, as it relates to the different departments, once we uh, get further down the process, then obviously the Dornsife students are interacted with the Dornsife uh, Office of Admission when it comes to the review process. But as it comes to where you should ask questions, I think the best way to think about it is if you have questions about your application, the common app, uh, ways to submit materials or anything that relates to the classes that you're currently taking, I think your territory manager is a great way to start. If you have more specific questions about Dornsife programs, Dornsife majors, even the Dornsife supplemental question, I think our staff is a really great place to start. But again, if you go to one place and they don't have the answer or we don't have the answer, we'll make sure to find the right resource for you. So I know that even though we're getting really close to that November 1st deadline, uh, it doesn't mean that we're suddenly going to not be available for any questions. So just like these little sub webinars that we're doing. Yes, please feel free to use our office as a resource. We're happy to do that. Um, we have a few questions, I think, from prospective transfer students who are asking about requirements for that. And um, one specific question is asking about the number of units that um, freshman level transfer students would need to bring in to be considered a transfer transfer student at USC, where we're focusing primarily on the grades that you've taken in college, you need to have at least 30 transferable units. Um, and so, again, we take students at a freshman transfer level, at a sophomore transfer level. And so, so again, we, we, we aren't so much looking at the level that you're gonna be entering into if you're a transfer student. But if we're going to be focusing primarily on the college coursework that you did as a transfer student that you would be bringing in, 30 is the magic number. We're looking at that mag that that 30 unit level. Um, if we're taking a look, if you have fewer than 30 transferable units, we are going to be looking at a combination between your high school record and your um, college record because you just haven't completed enough college um, courses 
thus yet for us to be able to solely focus on that college level coursework. So again, 30 is the magic number, but if you have fewer than that, you are still welcome to apply as a transfer applicant to USC. But again, we'll be looking at um, your high school transcript as well as your, um, your college transcript, kind of a combination of the two. Great, I think we're, we're on a consistent theme here. So I'll continue on with a uh, piece of the application and how things are submitted and credits granted and such. So one of the questions that came through is about uh, knowing when and how to submit official SAT and AP scores. Uh, does it need to be by a certain deadline? How does that work? I do also want to reiterate, I think this is a good time to just also, again, reiterate that USC is currently test optional. So for those students who have not taken the SAT or the ACT uh, or any of the AP scores or IB tests, you don't have to do that. That can be part of your application if you felt that uh, it's something that you're really proud of and that you've taken the test, you've worked on it, and you want to make sure that it's considered. It's considered an optional part of the application, so it would just be considered as a piece of your application. But as it relates to when to submit and how to submit, we always encourage students to submit those scores as quickly as possible. Uh, preferred by the deadline if you have them. We do know that there are some students who might take the the test either right after the deadline or very close and they're waiting for their scores. You know, you could obviously uh, self-report as much as you can if you have those scores and you don't have the official uh, test submission quite yet. But just as a caveat, if you submit after the deadline or you have that information after the deadline, there's no guarantee that it will be considered as part of the application. But again, the nice thing is it's an optional part of the application. So it will not hinder your process through uh, our admission review. Uh, but again, we don't want to we don't want to guarantee that it's going to be reviewed if you submit it on January 1st. And we've already been starting to review our applications after that November 1st deadline. So do the best you can. Um, you can always submit your any information that you get that needs to be updated to your application after you have submitted your common app can be sent to your admission counselor in the central office of admission and they can help out with that. And I do want to emphasize something Mark just said. We are still currently a test optional school. So for all of you who are applying as first year or freshman applicants, whether or not you submit test scores to us is completely up to you. Um, we are not going to ding you or knock you down if you chose not to report test scores to us, nor will you have bonus points in a sense if you um, if you do. And so so really the, the choice is up to you if you'd like to submit those um, SAT or ACT scores to us. So really re want to re reemphasize that because I have seen a few questions where um, students are kind of wondering how we take a look at that. And, and that is something that that we are holding to. <laughs> I think as Mark is looking for something else to ask, um, something I do want to address, because again, we're still kind of on the topic of the um, application itself. Um, I, are seeing, I am seeing some questions about the YUSC essay and, you know, and again, the content there. Um, I, I think, I, I hope that what's coming across in, in this is, again, we... There aren't so many secrets to give, I guess, in a sense, you know, we're trying to be as helpful as we can, but um, the application is really your opportunity to let us know who you are as a person um, and what drives you and what moves you, especially in all of the writing focus sections. We, and I know transcripts are kind of cut and dried as far as what courses you took and how you did in them, but any writing focus section of this application is your opportunity to tell us more about you as a person. And so in that YUSC section, Please feel free. Actually, what I would probably recommend there is that you make sure to answer both parts of the question because both parts are, you know, what are you interested in studying? And then why you think that USC would be a great place to do that. So um, I've seen essays where students take that opportunity to go on and on at length about why they want to study the major that they want to study, but really don't tie that into why USC would be a great place to do that, you know, um, and vice versa. I've seen students who barely touch on what they want to study, but talk all about the football games and the community here, the church and family, and how much they want to be a part of that. Um, I would say to do neither. I would say to do a combination of those two put them together because we really do want to know if you really want to be at USC that's amazing feel free to let us know that but also we want to make sure that we know what you want to do while you're here and hopefully it's not just to attend football games and so again that's a great part of the campus culture here but um but hopefully there are things that you want to study things that you want to get out of the experience here academically and that is something we hope to see in that section and apologies for the silencer. I think we got our wires crossed and I was expecting you to do the next question. So that, my apologies. 
Um, this is a great question and one that we get pretty frequently, especially for students who are still exploring and have a genuine interest in their major, but maybe aren't quite there yet in terms of having the experience available to them at their high school or their community college. So the question is, you know, for the major that I'm putting on the common application, is it okay if I didn't participate in many extracurriculars that are associated with that major? Um, and I think, of course, when you're going through an application process, having some type of supporting material that shows that you have done activities or maybe just even have an interest in that activity or that major is important. But again, like we've been talking about, we don't hold things against students who didn't have access or weren't able to participate in some of those extracurriculars. And I say that also because just because you didn't do something that was specifically major related doesn't mean that you don't have any other really great experiences or qualities uh, or involvements that may find that, okay, you know, you're interested in biological sciences. I wasn't able to do biological sciences research, but I was able to show my, you know, interest in inquiry and research through other areas or through classes or through experiences that I've already done in high school. So I would not be hesitant to apply to a major just because you're, you feel like you're missing a piece of that involvement. Um, whereas, as Laura was talking about, the YUSC or your academic interest essay is a great way for you to explain that, you know, I'm not, I haven't had opportunities in this, but this is why I'm interested. This is what I want to do. And so it's not always just about looking backwards. It's also about looking forward about what you might want to do while you're at USC. So that can be a great way to address that area and, and find ways to connect your experiences and your interests with what we have to offer at USC. And we have a question from a student who's asking whether we would accept a research paper or um, something like that to be part of the application. I'm often also asked if um, it would be okay to submit um, a website address where perhaps there's a um, a posting of a piano performance or some kind of you know art exhi exhibition that you know and students want to share those extra um, facets of themselves with us. Um, I would say not to include an entire research paper. <laughs> and so that that might be kind of lengthy and, um, you know, and unwieldy, um, it, you know, as part of your application. If you'd like to, in the additional um, information section, include a research abstract, just so we have a sense of what you did, that would be fine. Again, if you'd like to include some kind of website where, again, if you have a particular art exhibition or, again, music performance or something that you, you especially wanted to share with us and want to share a link there, that is completely fine as well. Just keep in mind that depending on what you put there, the content may or may not be thoroughly reviewed by, by the people who read your application, knowing that, again, we try to get through all of the information that you send to us. But when there are a lot of applications out there, sometimes we skim a little bit more than others in a sense. And so, of course, we're reading everything that you've written in the application. But sometimes when there, there are those extras that are in that section, um, sometimes we can't spend a lot of time with them, which is why I probably wouldn't include an entire research or publication. But again, if you'd like to, if you're, there's something you're particularly proud about and want to share it in that section, please feel free to do so. Um, and um, and again, that's just another um, aspect of the application. Something else I do want to put out there as well, though, especially for uh, my friends who are thinking about a career, especially in the sciences or more, or in the health in a health profession. Research is not something under, or I'm sorry, research as a high school student is not something that's mandatory or something that we're necessarily looking for on your application. If you did it, that's wonderful and great. Um, feel free to tell us about it. If you didn't, um, please don't feel like you, there's no way you're going to get admitted to USC. Many, many students that come here um, who would like to engage in research at the undergraduate level while they're at USC have not had an opportunity to do that as high school students, and that is completely fine. So I just want to make sure that you know that you're not um, at a deficit if you haven't been able to have that opportunity. Just to change up the flavor of the questions, uh, we spent a lot of time on the application, so I'm going to transition to something different. Uh, one of the qu questions that we got in the Q&A was about how Dornsey fosters collaboration across other colleges here at USC. Uh, as I mentioned before, we are the College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences during my intro, um, but there are, of course, a lot of other academic units here uh, at USC that many of our students are interested in taking classes in or engaging with. Um, and so the question is really just about how do students kind of cross disciplines, how might they take classes in other colleges as a Dornsife major? Um, and the answer is absolutely, you have the ability uh, as a USC student to take classes all across the university through all the different colleges. So as a Dornsife student, you're not restricted to only taking Dornsife classes. Of course, as a Dornsife major, that's going to be the bulk of your time. Um, it's gonna be the 
major, uh, the major part of your curriculum here at USC, but there are lots of ways that students can engage in different programs across the different colleges as well. Some majors at Dornsife even already have classes programmed in that allow you to take classes in some of the other schools. You know, we have something like uh, international relations and global business that splits their time between the international relations department and the school of business here at USC. Uh, we have a major in the humanities called narrative studies that really looks at storytelling. And so you do a lot of creative writing classes, but also one of the questions was really specifically about you know, screenwriting or cinema, and that's where some of that interaction might come in. But you also have opportunities to take classes all across the different colleges, either through your general education courses, which are really the foundation of learning that you're going to be doing in your first couple of years here at USC, um, or in your elective courses. And that's where students can get very creative and have a double major or add a minor to their degree. So the that was the long answer, but the short answer is you absolutely have the opportunity to explore around the campus and take classes all across the different colleges. And on a related note, we have some questions about double majoring and the ability to do that. And, and so as Mark was saying, every single student at USC is going to have to declare a major um, by the time they graduate and complete all the requirements for that major. Every student is going to have to complete some general education course requirements. But in addition to that, every single student is also going to have elective units. And you can spend, quote unquote, those elective units any way you want. And so for some of our students, they decide to spend those elective units on a in, in a very concentrated way, and that becomes their second major, and that's how they're able to, to uh, achieve a double major. Some students want to have a minor and um, and then have some classes left over just for fun to spend those elective units on on a class that has nothing to, with, to do with their majors and minors, but everything to do with um, some personal interests that they have, and that is completely fine as well. And so having a double major doesn't necessarily make it more challenging. It just means that your course selection has to be a little bit more um, directed and you know and what's nice is that we have a whole team of academic advisors who are here to make sure that you are going to be aware of any requirements that you have for your major or your second major or your minor and that way you can make sure that you are taking the appropriate courses that you need to graduate from here on time and so um so in other words taking a double taking on a double major isn't necessarily more challenging especially if it's a double major if you're double majoring in areas that you love and that you're interested in it just means that you have to be a little bit more careful with the academic actual courses that you're selecting every semester. And to jump off that, one of the questions is, does double majoring within Dornsife, but I'll, I'll broaden it to double majoring at all, alter your course difficulty, delay your time in graduating? How does that all work together? And the way that you can think of our curriculum, at least as a first year student, is you can think of it like a giant pie chart broken up into three pieces. So you have your USC core, which is what a lot of schools would call their general education coursework. You have your major, and then you have your electives. And so the electives, again, are a way for students to get creative and take classes and majors and minors that are different than their current major, or they can be the same. It's up to you on how you want to handle that. But that is specifically built into your time at USC so that if you decide to add a program or take classes in a lot of different places, however you want to handle that, it's already programmed into that four-year plan. So now, again, Nothing is ever the same for every single student. Some students, if they decide that they want to add a second major in their final semester, their final year, you're going to have to make some concessions about when that timing is and what classes you might have to take. Um, but as Laura mentioned, the academic advisement piece and support that we offer is by program. So as you progress through your time at USC, if you have a major, a minor, if you have what we call a pre-professional program for students who are interested in looking into uh, graduate studies or an emphasis, I should say, then that's three different advisors all working together in those separate areas to make sure that you're getting the classes you need at the right time, in the right sequence, so that you don't have to delay your time in graduating. And at least from our experience, the vast majority of students who have picked up a second major or a minor still graduate within four years without too much difficulty. And again, related, still related to the topic of double majoring, we have some questions about whether you should then address, if you intend to double major, if, should, if you should address that in your common application. Um, yes, if you are putting down a first choice and a second choice major, but you actually intend for that to be a double major combination, um, unfortunately, you can't declare a double major upon entry to USC only because we would double count you and it would just get confusing for us. So you do have to select one as your first choice major and one as your second choice major. But please feel free in that YUSC section and let us know that you intend for that to be a double major and why you want to combine those areas in the first place. Again, that would be really interesting for us 
to know. And then in related to that as well, we have us, I think it might be the same student who's asking about what are some of the benefits of attending a school like USC that has such diverse course offerings um, and being able to take classes from among so many different schools at USC, both within your major and outside of your major. And I think honestly, that is one of the huge advantages of USC, the fact that we have so much under one roof. So um, if you'd like to, just because you love movies, if you'd like to take a class in cinema, just because you can do that. If you've always loved dancing, but you don't intend to, to be a dance major, um, but you don't want to you want to study that more as a discipline. You can do that um, if you want to take art classes or yoga classes. Or um, I'm 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 losing. You know, we have so much under one roof. Basically, I think what's really great is the fact that you can do that because again, every single student here is going to have some of those elective units left over. Um, I'll be honest. When I was a student at USC, I took a ballroom dancing class. It had nothing to do with my major or my minor. Um, also, I'm not a great dancer, so um, it it wasn't anything that I was really serious about. But it was a fun way to spend time with my friends. Um, so we all took it together, and it was also a really great way to try something out of my comfort comfort zone and just um just do something just because and I think that that we, we do see the value in that you know being a full a whole person um and challenging yourself to do things just because and for no other reason and so that's also something that I think is really valuable about a school like USC is again the wide a breadth of offerings that we have here thanks Laura um looking at our questions here uh one question was about if the I'm just going kind of tangentially to back to some common application questions. Um, logistically speaking, someone was asking about how to submit letters of recommendation to their application. Um, does it have to be by November 1st or can it be other early action? How the common application works is that you'll actually input the contact information for the individuals who will be writing your letters of recommendation. Um, and just a reminder that one of the requirements is that it needs to be from uh, a counselor, at least to start with, um, or someone that's you know, very closely related to that position who can speak to your time at your high school. Um, and of course, uh, there's also an opportunity if you would like to submit a teacher recommendation, there's a, there's a way to do that. But very simply, you, you won't be submitting the recommendation yourself. They'll be sent a, a kind of an email and then they will put in their information and put in their recommendation to be uploaded directly to your file. So um, as we talked about with the, the test scores, just try to get those out as soon as you can. Um, that way those can be added to your application as well. Great. I saw another question in here about the data science major. And it, that is something I do want to address because I often get questions about it. And um, we don't really have a great way to kind of post the information anywhere online. Um, data science is a major at USC, but it can only de be declared as a secondary major in, uh, in conjunction with a Bachelor of Arts degree within Dornsite. And so for that reason, you won't see it on the common application because again, um, as I had said earlier, you can't declare a double major as you're entering USC. So what you would do is um, pick an area of study, it needs to be a Bachelor of Arts area within Dornsife that you would like to apply the data science to because data science in and of itself has no meaning. What you need to do is think about whether you want to apply that data to, for example, psychology or economics or applied math or cognitive science um, or international relations. You, you really can and um, think about a wide range of, of areas that you can apply that to. But what's nice is that when you're applying to USC, you pick that area of study that you want to apply the data science to. Um, you apply to that. Um, and then after you're here at USC, what you can do is then go ahead and start the process of adding that data science major so you can learn more about how to use the data to apply um, the analytics to the major that you selected. So again, um, it's not something you'll see in the common application, but again, think more critically then about how, how you would like to apply the data later on down the line after um, after you start, hopefully start at USC. Supplementally speaking, there are not only uh, data science, but there are a number of other majors that students may find via research, either through the course catalog or on the main Dornsife website that is separate from the Dornsife admission website, where they may find a handful of majors that aren't on the common application. And just to you know clarify, it's very simply, just as Laura suggested, with uh, making sure that the classes or the majors that are not on the common application are just majors that you can't apply into. It doesn't mean that you can't engage with them once you get to USC, especially within the Dornsife College. Uh, again, data science is a little bit unique because it does require a partner piece, uh, being that bachelor's degree in the uh, liberal arts college here 
at USC, Dornsife, but for some of those other programs, if you find one that's your, that you're interested in, you could talk about it a little bit in your Common App if you, if you find that that's really important to you. But again, one of those things that you don't necessarily have to worry about until you get to USC. So I just wanna make sure that was clarified as well. I wanted to focus a bit on some of the more kind of those hands-on learning opportunities that we had talked about before. I know we've been spending a lot of time on the application, um, but we have a student who's asking about the study abroad opportunities available through Dornsife. Um, we have, of course, your traditional semester-long and year-long study abroad opportunities um, in over 30 different countries all over the world. And so those definitely are open and available to our undergraduate students. And if you're interested in a study abroad program, you would meet with an academic advisor, tell them about your interest so that we can can make sure that that study abroad experience can be incorporated into your major um, or alongside your major um, during your time here at USC. But in addition to those kind of traditional semester long and year long offerings, we also have short term study abroad offerings. I know we have some students who don't necessarily want to spend an entire semester or year away from campus. Um, they're involved in a lot of different student organizations or they don't wanna miss football games or, or you know, they have a whole a host of different reasons why they don't necessarily wanna spend that entire semester away from campus. And so we have um, short term programs called Maymesters, July Mesters and Problems Without Passports. And so oftentimes those are classes that meet in um, in the summertime, so May, June, and or July. And so what we do is we have students take a class with a faculty member, they learn about a particular topic, and then they spend the last half of a month-long class um, actually traveling to a different part of the country or part of the world to engage in, to engage in more learning um, in a hands-on way. And so in past years, we've had students um, go to India to um, understand um, concepts of um, religion and death and how that's um, how you know ceremony basically is is conducted in India. We've had students go to um, go to the Arctic to talk about global politics and climate change. Um, We've had students really take advantage of a lot of different these of these opportunities. Um, even our pre-health students got get a chance to go to Oxford um, to study international response to diseases. And this past go around, they even got a chance to talk with um, people who were on the front lines of you know the COVID response crisis all over the world. And so, really getting a chance to learn from people all over the world, global leaders, but getting a chance to engage in a USC class. And so, is something I think that's a really important part of an undergraduate experience, and something that we hope all of our undergraduate students get a chance to engage in during their four years here? I'll answer two questions because one I can answer very, very quickly. Uh, someone had been on a previous Zoom with us, so thanks for coming to another program, uh, but they had her talking about the Dornsife DC program uh, and whether that can be taken at a specific time or how that all works. And that really is kind of a partner piece to some of the programs that Laura was talking about as sort of a studying abroad as if you will. So uh, students will essentially spend time in DC, take classes while they're there. Typically it does partner with some type of summer in paid internships. So, and that internship can be geared toward whichever area you might have an interest in. So it's vastly different for any of the students who are there. Um, we also just opened our capital campus at Washington DC. So we do have a physical space where students are taking classes and participating in the USC community. So that is certainly one way that uh, you can engage in study abroad from a you know shorter term standpoint. Um, but one of the other questions, uh, it looks like, let's see, ah, here we go, uh, is also talking about what types of research opportunities are offered to students, because they did mention that we have 66 research centers and institutes, but that is just one way that students can participate in research. And again, to clarify, those areas or centers or institutes are physical locations on campus where students are participating in research, either with a cohort of other USC students or they're partnering with a faculty who runs a specific lab. And that can look like a variety of experiences, whether you're a humanities student, a natural science student, or a social science student. We've had students participate in our Brain and Creativity Institute. Uh, one of the programs that are projects they're working on is how students uh, or how music education affects structural development in children's brains. So we have students from the cinema school, the music school, and you know, in programs like psychology, neuroscience, cognitive science, who are all collaborating on projects together. Um, that's just one example. There are a lot of others. You can actually just go and search USC Dornsife Research Centers, and there will be a link with all of our different research centers and institutes listed. But there's also programs for students in research where you can just partner with faculty on research they're already doing as part of being a faculty here at USC or just being part of a researcher in their own everyday lives. So 
I have found that a lot of students may find research either through their advisor or just by asking their faculty in the classroom, wow, your research sounds really interesting. How can I get involved? And it's just as simple as making that connection too. So you will find that I think with a lot of the things we're talking about, whether it be research, study abroad, or even like things like internships, career preparation, it's not a matter of if it exists, it's a matter of how it exists, you know, how you want to get involved in it. And I even find sometimes there's almost too many opportunities. So you'll find that during your time at USC, you start to settle in, you'll find some of those opportunities that speak to you the most. And related to what Mark just um, said at the end there, um, we have a number of questions about career and internship uh, opportunities. And so um, USC Dornsife actually has its own career center. Um, it's called Dornsife Career Pathways. Um, and this is actually a supplement to the main USC Career Center. So what's great is that our students can get um, hands-on um, I guess, um, support from either or both of those centers. Um, what's nice about using the Dornta Career Pathways Center in particular is that our career advisors are really focused on um, career um, pathways and internships for our liberal arts and sciences students. So again, um, everything from helping you even figure out what are some career pathways that might be available to me um, to bringing different speakers and um, internship coordinators to campus to having a mentorship program where we're actually setting you up with um, professionals in different um, career fields so that you can actually learn more about those fields. And again, have a have a Dornsife mentor or a former Dornsife mentor there um, to support you along the way. So again, what we're trying to do is make sure that we're supporting you not only during your time here, but also during your time after USC. And so um, um, our careers, our career services um, advisors are really amazing at making sure that they tailor their advice um, to students of particular majors and to you. And so I think what's great is that you can definitely take advantage of all of those things. And even if you're saying, I don't even know where to start I think what's great is they they start with that too, where they have a kind of what they call it the work hit series, where they actually talk about, you know, how to create an elevator pitch basically to kind of um summarize who you are and what you're all about, how to write a resume, how to have a su successful interview. And so they really are trying to prepare you every step of the way to be successful even after you leave USC. Going back to the application, we're starting to get some more app questions. Uh, one that I think is important is, are there advantages or disadvantages to applying to specific majors? Uh, and that really relates to, I think a lot of students feel that there might be more competitive or less competitive majors on the common application. Um, at the Dornside College, at least, um, we do not have any impacted majors, which means we are not looking for a specific cap of students. And once we hit that cap, we don't consider any more students after that. Uh, we also do not differ in terms of our admission rate over the different majors here uh, at Dornside. So we always encourage students to apply for the major that they feel most passionate about, that they're most interested in. I think some students feel that if they go for a quote unquote less competitive major, that might give them a better chance of admission. But if your, you know, your interests and your passions all read toward one major and then you apply for a different one and you, we, we just won't see the connection there. And I think that put, I think that may put you at a disadvantage of just not being able to tell your authentic story. And we want you to do that. Now, that being said, there are some majors, especially as we talked about very early on today, um, the performance-based or portfolio-based majors, those do have a different process and they are differently competitive because they do involve some more of those screening um, and other steps that you need to take to go through the admission process there. So again, wouldn't worry too much about competitiveness when it comes to majors, especially within our college here at Dornsife. Just pick the one that you're most interested in and that's going to allow you to you know, apply for the one that you would like for it. Great. And on that note, we have um, someone who's asked about pre-health major opportunities. And so um, I think Mark had mentioned earlier, we do have what are called pre-professional emphases that are open to you on the common application. So as you're filling out the common application, you may notice that you have a first choice major option, a second choice major option, and then you have what's called a pre-professional option. And again, pre-professional is completely optional, <laughs> an optional option, I guess, as the case may be. And so you don't have to indicate a pre-professional emphasis, but if you have one, it helps to give context to your application and to what you hope your future career goals may be at this point in time. And so you can choose, for example, pre-med, pre-law, pre-pharmacy, pre-dental. Um, some of the, those are some of the options that are there. And so we actually don't have a pre-med major here at USC. And so, because we have pre-professional emphases. And so when you come to USC, we really want you to know that if you're interested in a career in a health profession or in law, 
there isn't one particular major that's best or most appropriate, please feel free to major in whatever it is that you want to study and then go ahead and indicate for us a pre-professional emphasis along with that. Um, what that will do is if you get it, if you are admitted to USC, then you'll get a chance to meet with our pre-law and or pre-health academic advisors in addition to the academic advisors for any majors or minors that you declare so that you can make sure to get great advice as far as um, uh, co-curricular opportunities that you may want to get involved in, student organizations, research opportunities, internships, um, things like that. And so again, at this point in time, we don't, as, as Mark was saying, there isn't a best major out there, uh, an easiest major to get admitted to, nothing like that at all. Please um, indicate the major that you are most interested in studying, although knowing that, yes, you, you could change your mind later and that's completely fine as well. I'm going to reframe one of these questions. Um, there's a question about applying as an undeclared major or what we call maybe an open major or an exploratory, undecided, however you want to clarify that. Um, and you cannot apply into an undecided major necessarily. Uh, we do ask that on the common application, you select a major that allows you, especially if you're coming to USC and you get started at USC, it allows us to get your academic advisement ready. It allows areas of support, classes, kind of all that to be uh, taken care of as part of your application process. Now, that being said, we do offer as part of the Dornsife Common application, you will see three majors that relate to uh, natural science, social science, and humanities that are considered to be open majors. We treat them as such for students who are really, really interested, let's say, in the natural sciences, but they don't know exactly which pathway to go in the natural sciences. So that's still a great way for you to get within that area of study without having to select a specific major, but it's really not intended to be an undecided in that, in that vein. Um, so we really do encourage students to try to find a major that they connect with, that they're passionate about, um, and that will allow them to kind of tell their story through their application. But there is an open natural science, social science, and humanities major option on the Common App that you can consider if you feel like the description I just mentioned is right for you. Definitely. And also related to majors, we have some a student who's asking about the difference between a Bachelor of Arts degree and a Bachelor of Science degree. Um, you may notice on um, as you're applying to majors on the Common Application, Dornsife has two types of degrees that you can um, engage in, and one is a Bachelor of Arts and one is Bachelor of Science. Um, some of our most of our majors are only offered in, in one option or the other. And the difference between the two is not that one is a science degree and one is not. Um, in fact, a lot of our science majors actually have the option of, of both in a sense. And so the difference is that if you were to um, obtain a bachelor's Bachelor of Science degree in, say, biological sciences, you would need more biology classes to get that degree than you would compare to the Bachelor of Arts in biological sciences. And so when you apply to USC, for those majors that offer both options, you actually are defaulted into the Bachelor of Science degree. Um, and the reason for that being that um, it's it's hard to know right now at this point in time, you're 17 or 18 years old or, you know, and so it's hard to know which path which might be the most appropriate for you. And so just so that we don't, again, confuse any students any more than needed, um, go ahead and just apply to the major that you're interested in. And again, for um, most of our majors, there's only one option. It's either a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science. For some of our majors, um, and a lot of those tend to be our natural science and math majors, um, you have the option of either, but on the common application, you get defaulted into the Bachelor of Science. If after meeting with your academic advisor while you're at USC, you decide that the Bachelor of Arts option would be a better fit for you and your career goals and your interests, then your academic advisor can make the easy switch and switch you into the Bachelor of Arts option. So it's nothing that you really need to worry about right now. Um, far more important is to pick the major that you're most interested in right now. Great. And as we start to get closer to the end of our time together today, uh, wanted to also, we're seeing a lot of questions about just areas of support or ways that students feel supported here at USC Dornsife. Um, I think that also relates to the prospective student phase, like as you are applying for USC, what are, where are some areas that you can find information or find support? Uh, so I'll kind of like work through the progression of time uh, through the prospective student phase. And then obviously when you're a student here at USC, uh, one student was asking about how to connect with current students. And we actually have a really great resource that we will post in the chat at the end of our time together today um, about how you can connect with some of our Dornsife ambassadors. These are current USC Dornsife students from a variety of majors, from a variety of perspectives, from a variety of backgrounds 
who are more than willing to answer any questions that you may have either about their personal experiences, their major, um, as well as just their time here at USC and kind of help you along your way as you start to think about where you might want to go and what you might want to do while you're here at USC. So that's a great resource. Uh, they're wonderful contacts for you. Um, obviously, we mentioned that we in the Office of Admissions Student Success at Dornsife are also great resources for you. So you can always call and email our office, which again, we will talk about and we will post in the chat at the end of our session. When you get to USC, we've already talked a lot about the academic advisement piece. Uh, we actually have a model where you start with a first year advisor if you're a first year student to kind of get you settled in, acclimated to the college campus. And then in your second year is when you transition to your academic advisor within your major. So I think there's a great network of getting you kind of settled in, transitioning to being a college student, and obviously becoming a little bit more comfortable with where you are in the university. Um, but we also have great areas for advisement in career services, like Laura mentioned, the Career Pathways Office, uh, Study Abroad has their own advisement, uh, really anywhere that you can find questions or that you have questions and you need to find answers, there's going to be areas of support as well. Uh, and then we also offer, because one of the questions was about mental health and sustainability and just kind of treating not just the academic side of things, but your personal and your social, your emotional side. Um, we have an entire student health center that has an, a floor dedicated to counseling services, mental health resources. Um, we started an initiative a few years ago about ar around mindfulness and just taking care of the self as well. So um, I find just like some of our other extracurricular experiences, there are almost too many places to find support here. So I hope that once you get to USC and you are here, you'll find that that is the case. And then in addition to that, um, if you're looking for support in the way of um, support for, say, learning disabilities um, mm -hmm. or other need accommodations, we do have a um, USC Office of Student Accessibility Services. And so and they definitely, um, for any documented disabilities, they are definitely able to work individually one-on-one -on -one with students and provide any necessary accommodations. So, um, so please know that that's also a resource as well. Um, I think as we're kind of getting to near to the end of our time, um, I, I, I guess we, we have a question about from a student who is wondering about how we would describe USC. And so, um, so yeah, and I think that's a fair one. I think that um, we oftentimes ask our students on, on panels to describe USC, but as staff members and, and also myself as a former student, um, I think that we also, you know, kind of have get a, get a vibe of, of what USC is like. So um, I guess, Mark, I'll start, you know, and so, um, so I guess when I think of USC, I really do think of it as a, you know, a place of not just support, like we were talking about, it really is a, a family of students who really, it's a community of people who really care about each other, care about doing good. I think that's how I would describe the Dornside students in particular. Um, students who are really looking out not only to do their very best, but they're looking out to do their best, but not at the expense of others. They're trying to re lift themselves up, but lift others up around them as well and leave the world a, a better place. And I really do appreciate that about our student community is that they really are looking for ways to support each other and to make sure that um, this is going to be a great, a great environment and a great place and an enjoyable experience for, um, for the time that they're here. I think that's a great way to define it. And I find that very similarly, this is just a fun place to be. Um, I think when you look from the outside, it's, it's a college, you know, there's there's football, and that's kind of like what people see when they don't have a lot of uh, interaction with USC. And when I started working here, I was not an alum as well, so I kind of came in with fresh eyes. I eventually am an alum now. I eventually took a graduate program here as well. But once you get on campus, and, and that's why we really encourage students, if they can, either attending by one of these virtual programs or being on campus as well, um, the, the atmosphere is very much about not just the collaboration support that Laura talked about, but the excitement of just being here and being in the same place. I think one of the things that we really missed during uh, the time where a lot of things were shut down was the energy that the students brought and the environment that existed just by bringing all these different students uh, from different backgrounds and different experiences together. So I think the way that I would describe USC is it's just multifaceted. It, it just it in itself is designed to bring students together from all different places, but there's a commonality of that passion and that interest and that excitement for just being here and being a part of the community that I, I've always really enjoyed. And I think a lot of our students enjoy too. 
Great. Thank you all so much for joining us today and submitting your questions. Um, again, I just want to take a minute to go over our application deadlines. So I think we have a slide here as the application deadlines. If you're planning to apply to a major in Dornsife, again, if, and if you're interested in that early action option, um, and, and or if you are interested in being considered for merit scholarships at USC, again, please select early action as your admission plan and submit your application by November 1st, 2024. And again, this is specifically for the Dornsife students, um, not for students who are um, applying as a first choice major to any of the arts programs um, here because they have separate application deadlines. Um, if you missed that deadline, um, we have a January 15th final deadline for our first year or freshman applicants. And then for any of our transfer applicants in the audience, February 15th is your application deadline. And finally, one of our colleagues is going to be putting our contact information. I had mentioned that there were some resources and contact places where you could reach us, as well as where ways that you can contact some of our current Dornsife students. Uh, they'll be putting that in the chat, uh, which is separate from the Q&A box where some of you were asking your questions. Um, but please, I want to encourage you, as Laura had mentioned earlier, do keep in touch with us. Do use us as resources, um, especially if we weren't able to respond to your questions today. I think we got through the majority of them and we tried to bunch some questions together. So each person had some piece of their question answered at least. But again, if we didn't, you can always feel free to email our office. You can give us a call. You can check out our website. You can reach out to our students. Uh, we are absolutely available for you, especially during this time as you are considering applying to USC. For some of you who have already applied to USC and submitted your application, uh, we are still resources for you even after that application has been submitted. So do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Um, we want to thank you all for all of your questions and your engagement. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we really do want to wish you the best of luck through the common application, through the college application process in general, whether it be through USC or otherwise. Um, but as always, have a great rest of your day and bye now. Right on.